Hello, Hello there, and welcome to the Ask Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz like there's no tomorrow. My name is Tom, and as always, I'm joined with my co-host, John. Hey, it's hey, me! Hey, we're in the we're in the week countdown now. Yes, Less it's in a week. A week till, uh, the, the the glorious day of we've been waiting for this day for four three years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if you really want to be like pedantic about it, we've been waiting five years since Batman v Superman came out. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I would argue we've been waiting five years, but like officially since Justice League, it's been about three or four years. But it's exciting. So yeah, Zack Snyder's Justice League is very close, everyone. And today very, we are going to be fun. we're going to be doing our final part of the Zack Snyder extravaganza before. Uh, Justice League itself. If you haven't watched our other videos, we've done Dawn of the Dead, 300, Watchmen, Man of Steel, and this week we're going to be talking about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Ultimate Edition. Uh, and it's now with the uh, Blu-ray. Bl- Blu-ray, uh, four, 4K, discs. all of it. Uh, two discs, behind the scene. <laughs> Um, so so, yeah, so, so much content. Movie. So yeah, no, we've got a bit of news as always, but um, no one division this week. Main segment yeah. just going to be completely oh, focused that. on this three-hour juggernaut of a film. Um, wow. Oh, oh, speaking of juggernaut, I watched something this week. I'll yes, be talking did. about that. We'll talk about that in, in the weekly, weekly viewing. Um, let's get started and talk. We've got a whole load of Snyder Cut stuff to talk about, really. <laughs> Um, so, first of all, we continued our week of teasers, so we'll just have a little bit of a conversation about all the, about all these teasers, so we start off, we had an, we had an Aquaman teaser, I thought it, you know, um, some scenes of him swimming and stuff, you know, you heard Volko yeah. talking, Volko, obviously Willem Dafoe's character who was cut from the theatrical, and some stuff about Wonder Woman, where she talks about how the two species haven't, um, you know, interacted in a while, what do you think of the Aquaman teaser? Uh, for Aquaman, yeah, yeah, that, um, I think, um, I think he's, like, pretty, um, uh, underrated character, like, um, he's kind of a bit, like, wasted, like, you don't see mostly in TV shows, films, but, um, him being, getting, like, a teaser, I think, uh, that would be, um, I don't know, like, um, experimental, because we saw the one, uh, back in, 2017 because this is going to be different because mm-hmm. uh, this is this is Snyder's film and uh, 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 yeah I I'm, I'm just pretty excited to see all the different characters um, having those um, character uh, interactions and developments as well those sweet sweet character development all that sweet character development I think yeah I, I get what you're saying like Aquaman the film. Uh, in 2018 proved that Aquaman can be awesome and I think everyone kind of didn't feel that through his inclusion in um, the Snyder Cut and obviously Jason Momoa was one of the first people to confirm yes the Snyder Cut exists yes I've seen it and yes it's incredible it is the film we work so hard on so you know we you really know that there is a relationship between Snyder and Jason Momoa and you tell that, that they both care about the character so I'm very intrigued um, about what is going on there. But another teaser we got was for The Flash. Now, this teaser was bonkers. <sighs> so, you got, you know, words from Henry Allen and, you know, various characters. But the real cool stuff was some of this time travel stuff. So, you got Barry running and saying it's all the past, it's all the future. You know, Bruce, I think it's Bruce says, you've got to run faster than you've ever run before. I mean, this is just wild. I mean, what do you think of that teaser? <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely wild. And, um, uh... And like saying, um, what was the line? It's gonna be all right, um, is it? Um, or I, I don't know, but he was like something traveling, like that. Um, uh, like running so fast, uh, and then you can, and the, the really cool thing about this is that um, everything is like rebuilding around him. Like, uh, of course, he's trying to have a time travel. So that explosion, maybe like that's where the uh, film. Uh, takes to uh, when Darkseid takes over the world in that teaser and uh, like Barry going back in time. This is pretty cool, you know. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, obviously, Snyder has t- spoken, you know, in, in the past about like his plans for the kind of like Darkseid domination and, and how the Flash have to run through time. So I wonder how much of this. I mean, I mean, you know, we could see the Flash going back to Bruce from Batman v Superman and giving him that message. You know, there are loads of things that, you know, they might decide to do. But, I mean, I think whatever happens, I love The Flash. 
I was always so excited to see Ezra Miller's Flash in Justice League. Um, I thought that he was fine in the original film, and I'm so excited yeah. to see him really get a chance to shine, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and Ezra Miller is a great actor, and I think he he's is. a real smash uh, as playing the, um, as, as the Flash. Definitely. He will just... If, if anyone's seen, we need to talk about Kevin. I mean, that's all you have to say, oh, really. Oh, I mean, his yeah. performance in that is just absolutely bonkers. It's amazing. Yeah, he, in that film and him being in real life, that is, you can see the difference. But in real life, he's like he's he's sweet. He's um he's a nice guy. He's a bit uh, of a it's a bit of a crazy if see, dude. If you see him in, in in we need to talk about Kevin. Oh my God, he is um. Yeah, he, he's he's had quite a few, you know, great roles. Um, Murderous. I'll I'll give you that. Mm, yeah, definitely. That is a yeah. that's a, what's a wonderful film. But yeah, I mean, but, like, wait, anywho, I, I, I uh, think I think one of the the you know one of the like you can see especially in um, the flash like the scene in Justice League where where uh, Barry meets Bruce for the first time. You can see in that scene like he's got like some really cool lines. He's like, oh yeah, no, I, I like being teams, and you know he's like he walks this. I, I you know I heard someone say a really um, interesting. He walks this line between enthusiastic and annoying, and then he's just like. Brunch. What is brunch? And it's it, it 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 it's it's ridiculous. And then like him running around in the bat cave, like whoa, whoa! It's a cave. It's a bat cave. <laughs> and falling on Wonder Woman's boobs. The whole thing is just like I mean, oh oh yeah. And relating to that about um, Joss Whedon, he compared Gal Gadot to Natasha. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, so um, he compared. So Joss, he so com Joss Whedon. So there was like a, a massive uh, article about Wade Fisher, and um, and he said that Joss was comparing Wonder Woman to Nat Natasha, making that scene where Flash uh, falls on uh, Wonder Woman uh, to that in Age of Ultron, where well, Bruce yes, the same thing happens. That's just that's. That, I mean, I don't know. I shouldn't be surprised. You know, Wonder Woman and Black Widow are two very different people. Yeah, and he said Natasha and Ray Fisher was like. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not a fan of that. Um, but yeah, speaking of Wonder Woman, we also got a Wonder Woman um, teaser. Some Also some pretty cool stuff. There's a really nice shot of Steppenwolf in this one with like his eyes glowing blue. Um, and he has, yeah. little, he has a little fight with Wonder Woman. I think, you know, I'm really excited to see this new Steppenwolf. New Steppenwolf? Yes, yeah, like Steppenwolf. the new blue eyes. I think maybe this is where he gets his fourth potential. Maybe. Uh, well, I, I mean, know. there's this. I mean, anything other than the step more from the original film is the full potential in my eyes. Um, but yeah, um, so we got a, a, a cyborg teaser as well, where he had some some visions of like who he is, some really nice lines about like I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not alone and, and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, Snyder has said that cyborg is supposed to be the, the heart of the film, and I'm really excited to see, you know. The character done justice, yeah. Uh, intended. Uh, um, I I I think um, character will be interesting to see, and uh, and being the heart of the film, I think that's a, a very quite uh, a challenge. You know, like um, like all the characters that we've seen, there's like the most lo lovable characters, like Batman, Superman, but Cyborg. I think that will be really interesting to see how he is uh, going to be the heart of the film. And uh, we will see that to uh, this four-hour film, which is going to be exciting. Definitely, yeah. I, I think you know um, it, it's bold. It is bold to have the heart of the film, you know, unexpected. You know, you would expect that. I mean, obviously, they're going every every character is going to have a big role and their own character arc and all that. But like, I think it's 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 bold to make Cyborg the heart of the film. But I'm I'm all I'm all here for it. The idea that the idea that he sees himself as like Frankenstein's monster instead of like you know. Um, instead of like you know a hero, I think that's very interesting. It, you know, all, all Snyder's films have this kind of repeating narrative of of gods trying to kind of you know just be human, and and I really appreciate that. Um, I yeah. think I, the the final and probably one of the best teasers we got was the Steppenwolf teaser. Um, oh. So many cool details. I love how his armor when he's in like when he's in battle is all spiky, but then when he's 
like calm, it's like all sleek. There's obviously um, some little scenes of parademons dragging Atlanteans out of the sea. Snyder has spoken about how there's a scene where Steppenwolf very brutally beats up some Atlanteans, so that could be something like that. There is um, a Green Lantern in the in the flashback. You see some of, of Uxus, um, get some dark side dialogue, but you did see a Green Lantern in the air, so that was also in the original cut. I knew that wasn't a weed, and I knew that had to be a Snyder thing. Very, very cool. Um, and Antiope um, from Wonder Woman, Robin Wright's character, which I think is, you know, just a really cool connection to Wonder Woman. That I mean, what did you think of this teaser? Um, yeah, uh, I think that uh, Dark Side is just terrifying. Well, you can see a little bit of Dark Side, but like several of these characters are uh, terrifying, and uh, I think um, they're great. Um, and, and this is going to be. Um, um, Really, really satisfying because the one in twenty seventeen Steppenwolf. Uh, yeah, but well, that's just uh, mother. Yeah, the the one in twenty seventeen, the one uh, that uh, uh, looks an uh, uh, abom uh, abomination. Mm. Um, yeah, um, but then the one you see today is just completely different. Like a new uh, style that what you said about like him uh, when the armor just spikes when he's in, uh, in battle and um and it's gonna be interesting to see a different way uh, like a different path well i don't know like uh of steppenwolf um y you know what i mean like uh, yeah well i mean obviously in, 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 a, in a brutal way in a more brutal approach yeah obviously when they released that image of him like like the first kind of proper image of what he looked like. People were, you know, a little bit sceptical and, you know, but I, I do like how this design is, it isn't like anything else that, I mean, like Steppenwolf last time just looked like this generic, like, you know, grey kind of, you know, mess. But this time, you know, I really appreciate how, how the design is so kind of distinctively odd that it, stands out, you know, the, you know, the, the fact that the armor is this kind of living organism, the fact that, you know, he's so shiny and, you know, he's got this kind of like, this, this like figure and like, you know, like weapons. I think the whole thing, it just, it's so much more unique than Justice, Justice League, which, you know, was just fine. Yeah. And, um, oh, him saying, mother. Mother. Uh, I, think, I, I think I think I did hear Snyder say that he doesn't say mother in the Snyder oh, cut. Oh, that's that um, that is good. That is good. Hashtag and, uh, release the mother cuts. We <laughs> release the mother cut. Let's and uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, like did we see? Uh, we did see a glimpse of Dark Side, right? Um, um yeah, there was there was an image of a, a hologram Dark Side kind of thing that Steppenwolf was like bowing to. Um, and but there was obviously a lot of Uxus in the in the um, flashback. For those of you who don't know, Uxus is young Darkseid, little baby Darkseid. Um, little baby Darkseid. And he, he's fighting the the armies um, of Atlanteans, Amazonians, men, and Green Lanterns and gods. It looks like really interesting stuff. It looks like you know I I think the the flashback from the first film was decent, and I think you know it's exciting to see like you know, that become a whole kind of history lesson as, as Snyder has described it. Um, yeah. but yeah. Oh, sorry, one sec. Oh. She needs to talk to me now. Um, uh, okay. Right. Uh, right. Sorry, uh, people for the inconvenience. Right. Uh, I'm back. Well, I was going to say, you know, obviously the biggest Snyder cut bit of news this week was it leaked, uh, the first yeah. first hour and a half of the film um, leaked onto uh, Tom and Jerry. Um, How? Uh, I, well, I don't know. Was it Warner Brothers trying to sabotage the film? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. loads of people think different things, but who knows? It's it 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 was it was up for a bit, and then it was back. You know, not much has kind of come out about it. Um, but yeah, and but, a lot. Of um, have been saying is, uh, is that oh it looks amazing mm. so well the first reactions are in a load of people got to see it um, with the man himself uh, as an IMAX screening uh, and the reviews you know the reactions from them are overwhelmingly positive which is you know really cool um, but I don't think you know there's you know those are the di I think like 
there, those are like the big Snyder fans. So I think Snyder fans will like this. I'm not so sure about everyone else. Obviously, yeah, especially Batman... Rotten Tomato. Right, yeah, the critics, you know, on Rotten Tomatoes, they're not the biggest fans of it, and I, I, I get it, you know, I, I think, I'm not sure the Snyder Cut will be like a universally loved hit. It would be amazing if it was, I'd love for it to be, but you know, I just, I'm just not sure, you know? Yeah, but... and, um, and I think Empire will uh, give it uh, <laughs> a lower rating. I, I well, think Empire will... just released their um, Falcon and Winter Soldier cover, which I was quite upset, uh, uh, like just a bit upset by, because I was really hoping that they would do a, a Snyder Cut cover. Yeah, man. Um, why? why? Like that. I love their Batman v Superman cover. I mean, their original Justice League one was also very cool. Both images drawn by Jim Lee, I think. Um, so it's just a, it's just a shame that they uh, they couldn't. You know, didn't do it this time, but hey ho. I guess I guess uh, you know Marvel's more popular in any day as well. So yeah, I mean the massive TV show. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. They want this. The, the, the Empire Justice League. Um, yeah, and uh, a lot of reviews came in. Um, overall, the positive. And yeah, uh, a few days ago there was like a huge. Uh, uh, thing that was trending on Twitter, we saw the Snyderverse. This happened before, but this is massive this time because uh, when the reviews came in, like thirty thousand people tweeted it, and uh, uh, and it's just like you can see how much support that Zack Snyder gets, and it's just great to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the film isn't even out yet, and it's you know it's, it's already it's already trending, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, I think uh, Joe Manganiello did an interview this week where he said, you know, that he reckons that, you know, that there will be, you know, a, a big calling for, um, you know, Justice League 2 and 3. And I, I think I agree. Um, whether or not it will happen, whether or not Snyder wants, to, wants it to happen, whether or not Warner Brothers will let it happen, I think, you know, uh, it will be interesting. And it will definitely will be... Uh, asked for. Um, so our so our next piece of news is actually about Creed three. So it was previously reported that uh, Michael B. Jordan would be stepping into the director's seat, um, uh, and it has now been confirmed for a, a, a twenty twenty two release date, twenty third of November. And Michael B. Jordan himself has confirmed that he is going to be directing this film. Um, so you've seen the first two Creeds. Yes, of course. Um, right. So, what do you think about the the prospect of a third one? Um, well, I, I personally believe that the, uh, there shouldn't be a, a third one because the second one just closed a very um, uh, w w wonderful note. Um, and it, this is um, Michael B. Jordan's first uh, direct, uh, directorial uh, debut, right? Yes, it is. Um... Yeah, so that is going to be a challenge because... Um, um, yeah, the, the director who did the two, the two first Creed films, they're, they're brilliant. They are uh, a, a work. On, right, uh, the, so it's like, yeah. I think Michael B. Jordan can do really well. Obviously, he's, he's learned, he's worked with a lot of very skilled directors. You know, yeah. right? he, he's yeah. been in, I think, now I might be wrong about this, but he's been in all of Ryan Coogler's films, I think. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And, and obviously, Ryan Coogler is an excellent director, so there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure that he would have learnt skills from him. I'm just worried about, you know, getting the right, you know, like, you got, like the Rocky franchise at this point stands at eight films, and, you know, there are a yeah. couple of low points, but, like, in general, like, it's it's a strong franchise, and it ends on a perfect note. Um, Creed 2 really ends the franchise in a way that, you know, rounds everything off in a very satisfying manner. Um, and I think that, you know, Creed 3 could also be great, but, like, I don't want to risk it, you know? Yeah, um, well, I don't know what what's he going to do, um, Michael B. Jordan, but this is going to be a massive challenge because, um, uh, well, hopefully he has that, uh, that, that the style that the, um, the Rocky films have done, or, like, Creed. Uh, maybe we'll look back and see how you could, um, maybe try and make it a story that's unique for Creed 3 and um, yeah it's going to be a massive challenge for him I think yeah so um, yeah yeah well um, I, th I think Creed, I think Creed 2 rounded off many narratives you know it rounds off the Rocky story pretty well so I, I kind of wonder will Rock will Creed 3 
bring, will it just continue without Rocky? You know, I think that's a possibility. Could Rocky, I mean, maybe the, the, the narrative this time will be Rocky steps back into the ring and gets killed. Very much like Apollo oh, Creed. No. I mean that. I, I think that there is definitely. I'm just. I'm just not sure. You know what the justification will be to tell another story. Um, I have faith, but I'm also skeptical because you know if you've seen the original Rocky films, you know a lot of people see the third one as a low point or where the series really went downhill. I like the third one, but I get where they're coming from, um, and I think I don't need endless Creed sequels. Yeah. Um, but well, we'll see because this is the first director that debuted. So um, yeah, so um, we will shall be seeing that if he. Um, I don't know. This is a massive challenge, but yeah, it is. Yeah. Good luck, Michael B. Jordan. I guess. Um, so we have some lovely casting news. Um, <laughs> for casting. the Flash. So it has been confirmed that Kirsty Clemens, who is uh, or has played Iris West in Zack Snyder's Justice League, as we will see this week, um, is going to reprise her role in the Flash film, which I think is great. Um, you know, great to kind of like you know continue on these roles. It is obviously a shame that that Cyborg won't be in it, but it, you know it's great that that their kind of narrative in whatever form in Zack Snyder's Justice League will be continued. Um, also, um, Maribel Verdu. I think that's how you say her name, um, who was in Pan's Labyrinth, uh, has also been cast as Nora Allen. If you've read Flashpoint, um, you'll know that... You've read Flashpoint, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, you, you'll know that... Or if you watch the Flash TV show, you know, Nora Allen plays a huge role in that. Yeah, um, she, she does, yeah, with the with the Flashpoint. Especially the ending as well. Um, oh, that the ending is so emotional of that, Yeah, honestly. Well, um, um, uh, they, they will... They will they will definitely do that. Uh, I yeah, guarantee. I really hope they do it justice. You know, this film is ramping up to be big. You know, you got Supergirl, you got two Batman, you know, you've got Flash, um, you've got loads of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's this really emotional story. And I remember reading the Flashpoint last year, um, and you know, I was listening to the Flash soundtrack, and that ending. I can't remember what what track I was listening to, but it was it really hit me. You know, like it, it, it's a really really emotional thing. But unfortunately. Um, Billy Crudup will not be coming back to play Henry Allen. Um, obviously, uh, Billy Crudup plays Henry Allen in Zack Snyder Justice League. Um, but unfortunately, he will be filming season two of The Morning Show um, in, uh, while The Flash is filming. So he won't be coming back. So on one hand, it's cool that Kirstie Clemens is coming back. But it is a shame that Billy Crudup isn't. I think he's great. You know, we spoke about him when we did Watchmen. He is uh, Doctor Manhattan, so I think like he can do some really cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, and he's also well. I talked about the show, um, uh, the morning show, the one that, that I talked about. Yes. He's just a podcast. He was in that as well. So. Well, yeah, that's why he's he's filming season two. That's why he can't do the Flash. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's a great. He's great in it, um, but it's a shame. So. Yeah. Um, it uh, seems like um, the Flash will be filming soon, and I'm very excited to get our first look. Obviously, we know that there's going to be a new suit for the Flash. You've got like Supergirl that we're going to have a look at, like the two Batman. I'm very excited. Um, I love the Flash so much. I'm really excited to see what happens next. Um, uh, but we do have more casting news. Um, this time from Mission Impossible Seven. So, um, Christopher, Christopher McQuarrie took to an Instagram, um, to confirm new castings, uh, for the film. Obviously, the film is already chock-a-block with new actors for the franchise. You know, Hayley Atwell, Plom, Pom Clementieff, um, that guy from Mission Impossible 1. Um, but adding to that is Carrie Elways, uh, who people will know from The Princess Bride or Stranger Things. Mark Gattis, who people will know from Sherlock and Doctor Who. Um, Indira Varma, uh, who uh, is in Game of Thrones and Torchwood and in um, going to be in the new Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Rob Delaney, um, who we all know as... Um, oh my God, what's he called? From Deadpool 2. The guy. Oh, David... No, no, no. No, the guy, the guy, you know the guy, the guy who, who, Sugar Bear, what's his... A-A-A-A-M, Miller, something? No, 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 Rob Delaney, the, the, the character in Deadpool 2, oh my god, what's he called? Bob? No. Oh, oh, uh, no, um, Peter? Peter! Peter, yes! 
So as you all know from everyone's favourite character from Deadpool 2, Peter, he's also going to be in it as um, on top of Charles Parn Parnell, who is um, in going to be in Top Gun 2 and was in Transformers 4. Um, so a whole new you know slew of casting for Mission Impossible. Um, what do you think? Yeah, it's going to be an exciting cast. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm very excited. I think Mission Impossible uh, Seven is still slated for um, a release in 2021. So I'm I'm extremely excited for you know like what's going to happen. You know, Mission Impossible, the franchise has has gone everywhere. So yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. Excited to see more Ethan Hunt just running down. <laughs> Oh, oh, this time riding up. Obviously, there was that uh, that video of him riding up a ramp and jumping off a motorbike. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What the heck is going on in there? Very heck? exciting stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, without uh, further ado, let's move on to. Wow, that, that was um, a quick um, uh, like stuff about um, the news. And, you know, it's weird because last week we were just talking about One Division. Um, yeah, no, One Division this week. We have a, we have a, well, I mean, we have a two week break because we're not going to be talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier next week. Next week is entirely Snyder Cut. We're getting straight into it. Um, yeah. But yeah. Without, yeah. Before so without we talk. Ado, let's get into Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman. Um, right. There's so much to unpack. Um... Shall we start with the Miss... first time viewing get the screen because I think that's a bit appropriate about right, okay, like Okay, yeah, okay, interesting. Um yeah, so right, tell me about your first time viewing the film. Um so you showed me the trailer back yeah. in 2015. Yeah. I had no idea what the film was going to be like because right, I haven't you seen... hadn't you hadn't seen Man of Steel. Yeah, I haven't seen Man of Steel. You were like so excited for it. I was like what the heck? So, um, <laughs> well, obviously, back then, uh, I knew about uh, a lot of Marvel, and I didn't have, like, social media back then. I didn't know what was going on, um, but then I was a huge Marvel fan, so I was, like, watching uh, um, uh, Marvel trailers, but once you showed me that, I was amazed, because, um, like, about how, um, uh, like, uh, uh, Superman was about to punch uh, Batman, but then... Batman said, men are brave. Yeah, uh, I mean, that is just... I think there's yeah. so many, like... I think a lot of people love, especially those earlier trailers, and I agree there's so many cool moments in it that are, like, really exciting. Yeah, and uh, so uh, I told my dad, can we, can we go and see this film? Uh, and he was like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's go and see this film. Uh, he, he hasn't seen... I think maybe, but he has no rec uh, recollection of um, seeing uh, Man of Steel. Um, but, um, yeah, so I had no idea what was the film going to be. And uh, so the film opened up um, with... I had no idea what was going on. It was like Batman going around uh, this. But um, I, I knew a lot about um, Batman. But then this um, this was my first time see like seeing like a proper Batman uh, uh, on the screen. But I did watch the, the Dark Knight trilogy um, before seeing um, Batman v Superman because I wanted to get in, into it. Uh, so um, I was amazed at the opening start. I was like, what is going on? But I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and so, um, so I saw the film uh, afterwards and I was completely mind blown about how... Um, Amazing it was. Um, so, uh, and then um, Empire and other critics, um, I, I was like, oh, I wonder what they're going to say because this is a great film. And then they completely, they, they were completely harsh on it. They were I just... have the exact kind of same experience. Obviously, I think like now, obviously the theatrical cut is a very messy film. Uh, the ultimate yeah. cut is obviously what we're talking about today, and is a much improved film. You know, it's, yes, it, you know, it, 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 it's a lot more streamlined, I think, um, and it adds a lot more to the characters. But when I first saw that film in 2016, I loved it, and I remember thinking, "Oh my god, I love it so much!" And I was sitting. I remember because I watched it with my grandparents, and I, and, I, and we went to um, go eat at uh, Pizza Express, 
um, and I was sitting waiting for my food and I was texting my friends going, oh my god, it was incredible, you have no idea, like, you're gonna love it, and generally people didn't like it, and yeah. like, that was like a really like difficult thing for me to kind of like get like my head around. Yeah, and um, and a lot of people, um, I think this is like the properly the first time that people were like being too critical on uh, superhero films uh, and today earlier that um, I saw a quote uh, uh, about Grant Morrison you retweeted it man yes I did yes about like how um, like how um, like kids believe about this but then adults they question too much about it so um, just enjoy what you what you seeing really yeah so. it, it, it's kind of ironic for me to say this because obviously we, we have a podcast on the internet where we scrutinize and, and like review films. But one of the things that the internet has done is it has created this kind of, you know, um, this, uh, well, like, uh, I mean, like the, this kind of culture of, of, of being really, really hard, like, you know, like scrutinizing the smallest details. You know, I think about something like the last Jedi where people will be like, Oh, well the whole domain maneuver makes no sense. And it's like, well, it's not like, even if it doesn't make sense, I don't think the idea is that it does make sense. I think the idea is the culmination of all these plot lines in a very cool cinematic moment that changes, you know, the kind of thrust of the narrative. Um, and yeah. I think you get that with this film as well. You know, there are loads of things that people um, misconstrue about it. And I think one of the biggest things, uh, I mean, let's talk about Batman, Mr. Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah so uh, I had first time like seeing Batman on the big screen, but I did watch it, as I said, the mm -hmm. trilogy. Um, uh, and he, like, he was like, the, like a, a very terrifying character in this, uh, this film. Like, he, um, he, um, he's very brutal, especially in that, uh, warehouse scene, like, you can see, like, the full potential of, like, uh, Batman having any, uh, without having remorse, uh, and, like, just, just had enough of, like, uh, Gotham's problems and just seeing how, um, how gone it's got, like, how low it's gone. Uh, I think Ben Affleck is so perfect for this Batman he he is um, perfect with the Batman. I think he, that is like, the he, best Batman I've seen. Yeah, on he is definitely three. one of my favourite, you know, iterations of the character. He has this quiet rage behind his eyes, you know. He, he, you know, this is a Batman that's gone over the edge, and you really feel that, you know. I feel when watching the film, you know, you get this, you know this character who's spent 20 years, there are so many quotes of his where I really understand where he's, you know, 20 years in Gotham, you know, we've seen what promises are worth, how many good guys are left, how many stayed that way, you know, Batman has seen, you know, the worst of the worst, he's seen Joker kill Robin, you know, he's seen, as you see at the beginning of the film, he's seen Superman destroy a whole city, and I think it's, it's great how the whole film has him going over the edge, you know, he has the dream sequence where he's walking in the field, he goes to Martha's tomb, and from within, you know, he's consumed by, you know, this physical manifestation of the bat, you know, Bruce in the comics and in other iterations, he's scared about going over the edge, he doesn't want to kill because he's worried that the bat will take over, and now this Bruce has gone over that edge, you can see that the bat is taking over, and I think you know, he doesn't complete his arc in this film, he has an arc, but I don't think he fully completes, he doesn't return to the, you know, the Batman who refuses to kill, but he, he brings back some of his humanity at the end, because he can't yeah. look Superman in the eye, knowing that, you know, Superman is just as, as defenseless as he was back in the day, he can't look him in the eye and make that kill, you know, yeah. and I think that's it's such an important part of the character. Yeah, especially when, uh, in that final, mo uh, like, the final, uh, moment where um, Superman sacrificed himself to save humanity, defeating Doomsday, uh, and uh, Batman, like, has that, this sudden realisation about uh, Superman, and, like, he completely changes, like, his perspective on, like, um, on Superman as well, and uh, understanding about how, um, like, how the world portrays, uh, like, Betrays Superman like as this massive like as this god and uh, and like worrying that one day he will go evil and then uh, as I said Batman 
change his perspective, and that's how he nearly completes his arc. But well, we will see that in uh, in the Snyder Cut Definitely. about uh, that sweet character development. Oh, like, so sweet! You see, you see, like Superman pulling up um, Batman onto oh, the, 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 the ledge. Yeah. I mean, I, I think one of the things that you know is is something that you know that I think a lot of people say, oh, you know, you can't just, you know, kill Superman in this way after two films. And, you know, first of all, it's Superman. You know, he's an icon. You should be able to understand what his death means without thousands of films of set up. And second, you know, they killed Spider-Man and Black Panther and various characters in Infinity War without, like, any, you know, with, with so much less screen time. So I can I can accept, you know, Superman's yeah, death. Yeah. But I think, you know, the idea that the world is torn on him, you know, is, that, like, this person has killed so many but he's also saved so many you know who is he for you know like should there be a superman well there is you know you know th the whole ideological question i think is absolutely wonderful and yeah, one of the yeah. things that superman uh, um, you see that super for batman and for many other people you see superman sacrifice proves to people no no he was the hero that we needed you know he wasn't willing to lay out lay down his life and that's exactly what he did you know if you're looking for his monument look around you you know you see that he has changed people he's changed that kind of public perception yeah and um what else uh, so, yeah, from the comics, uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Mm. Zack Snyder, he, and I, it, obviously he's got this uh, inspiration from uh, The Dark Knight Returns, and he did it perfectly, I can really, tell you. I like, mean, he loves his Dark Knight. I mean, like, the suit, you can see <laughs> in, you know, like, both of his suits, I guess, in this film. You can see in Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know, got the Bat Tank. So many things are, you know, like, uh, influenced by The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, like like uh, Batman, like having this, like you can see the physique uh, with like Batman in the Dark Knight Returns and like Batflick, like you can see the physique, like the massive, like uh, the, the body, like the like it's towering, it's like it's t it's like showing that um, that the criminals that needs to be like to be scared, like they have this fear of this Batman trying to um, terrorize, like trying to terrorize Gotham and just yeah. trying to you save get people. That. You get that in his introduction, you know, obviously Bruce's introduction is a whole different thing to Batman's introduction. In the first scene you see Batman in, you see, you know, the people who Batman has scared and the people who Batman has saved are terrified of him. The cops who are coming are terrified of him. You know, the first thing you see is, you know, this like, you know, kind of like creature, you know, Batman in the corner, you know, who scurries away, you know, and, and it really is this kind of embodiment of fear, you know, and then you see that he has literally branded this criminal, you know, they really do make you feel like this is a Batman to be afraid of. This is a Batman who could just kill you, you know? Yeah. And especially like um, in the comics, Batman uses like he 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 thinks about the fear, and then like oh, I must put the fear in the criminals. That's how like that's like the true embodiment of uh, like uh, Batman. Like he's putting fear into criminals, especially in Superman. Like he um, there at the start, um, uh, Batman like uh, shoots uh, uh, Superman with the uh, the kryptonite, uh, and then. Uh, Superman's choking it up and like breathe it in and then Batman said breathe in that's fear yeah, yeah I think you know a lot of people are like well why doesn't Batman just you know like immediately stab him why doesn't Batman just immediately shoot him with kryptonite bullets and I, I, what I really appreciate about the film is how Batman wants to make him feel you know his whole kind of thing is you're not a god you were never even a man you know I bet your parents told you that you're worth something well mine taught me a different lesson the life only makes sense if you force it to you're nothing and I think you know the whole fact you know Superman's never encountered kryptonite before so the fact that he's like so like you know obviously just like ha ha you think you can get me and then like you know he feels this pain for the first time and Batman absolutely destroys him I mean if we talk for a second about the Batman v Superman fight it's not the fastest fight ever it's not the most like co over choreographed fight it's not like the warehouse fight it's not like you know Cap versus Iron Man it's 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 brutal and it's intense you know I feel every single hit one of my favourite moments in that fight is where Batman is just wailing on Superman and he's punching his jaw and every punch, less and less damage until he just punches Superman and Superman doesn't even flinch. And then Superman slowly rises up and Batman's like, I'm sorry. And then Superman slams him into the ground. You know, I think there's so much, like, brutality to it all. Yeah. Uh, you, and um, uh, and uh, a lot of people didn't like this Batman. 
uh, on screen like, oh, oh, he's killing criminals. Oh, he ha he hasn't uh, completed this arc. Oh no, that Martha scene. Well, we'll we'll get to that. We'll Martha get to the Martha scene. scene. Oh boy, will we get to the Martha scene? <laughs> yeah, we will. So, um, uh, so uh, in the Dark Knight Returns. Uh, Batman, who is complete, um, I, I talked to my friend, uh, to my friend last night about this, uh, about Batman being dark and why he's killing criminals. This is a Batman who's on edge all the time. Uh, especially you can see that like he had enough and, um, and then you can see that like the Bruce Wayne, uh, uh, the, the ego he has, like he, he doesn't have that, he does not that, um, that charisma that he has, um, from uh, from the comics, but like he's a much darker uh, person. Like he's been to a lot, and uh, and he kills criminals, uh, and um, yeah, he just had enough, really. And uh, you can see that from the yeah, documentary. Yeah, there's, there's this. He had a gun. He he had a gun, and um, yeah, so that are people just being mad. So yeah, there yeah. is this whole kind of thing of Batman is you know. He's becoming more and more the bat. He, yeah, as I said before, he's being consumed by it. He's he's scared that yeah. you know that he can't be like. If you think about the scene where Batman, where where Bruce is like, you know, I've got to go to Lex Luthor's and you know, like you know, steal his hard drive, and 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 and, and Alfred's like, no, you don't. You know, you've been invited. You can be Bruce Wayne. You can do it as Bruce Wayne. You know, like Batman interrogated loads of thugs and got nothing. It was Bruce Wayne who did this. You know, you can be you know, Bruce Wayne, and I think, like, yeah. Batman, you know, regains some of this humanity. A lot of people are like, oh, it's horrible that Batman kills. Yes, it is, and that's the point, you know? I think what I take from it is I don't I don't think the film wants me to feel good about Batman kill. I don't want, I think the film wants me to go like, yay, come on, kill him, like, keep on going. I think, like, you know, the idea that, you know, you know this Batman's gone over the edge uh, is, a I, is, is part of the I, point. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, go um, on. Um, it's, it's like it's uncomfortable seeing Batman killing, and that's the point because, yeah. um, like the media portraying Batman being this vigilante, and for well, years, and uh, and um, and that's the main, um, like the true an antagonist, the media, um, uh, mm. portraying Superman as this, uh, as this guard, uh, and then Batman being this vigilante, like about like you can see the juxtaposition about like Batman saying that men are brave. And then Superman trying to save the world, but then the media portraying him as a, as a guard, like men, this is guard, and then that's what Luke, Lex Luthor says. And uh, and um, yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, let's let's talk about the media. Um, I think you know, obviously, everything from this film comes from the fallout of Man of Steel. You know, Superman and Zod. You know, between them, leveled an entire city. It wasn't good stuff, and you know, and I think the way that the media kind of jumps on that is very, you know, it is what I would expect from media of the present day as well. Yeah. Um, um, what I love is this, you know, the montage of Superman um, saving people. You know, he saves the girl from the fire, he saves the astronaut, he saves the people on the boat, he saves the people in the flood. And all throughout, these people are, 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 are seeing him as a god, you know, like they're lifting their hands up to this, you know, monument in the sky. And Superman isn't comfortable with that. You know, in, in the scene, he goes to the, the Day of the Dead festival in Mexico and, and, and he, he lands and he smiles at the family. He's like, here you go, here's your kid back, you know, like... Well done. Um, and, and then they start to, like, you know, like, reach their hands towards him. And that's when you see his face drop. He doesn't He doesn't want to be this... He doesn't want to be Superman. He doesn't want to be, like, this god. He just wants to help. And all yeah. throughout, he's trying to help. You get the people on the... You know, the the, the, the bureaucrats, the, the politicians, the, 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 the um, journalists all saying, you know... Every action on this earth is a political act, you know, you know, Superman could have saved your child, but on principle, he shouldn't, we didn't want him to act, you know, should there be a Superman? Well, there is. I think that question that is posed is just so compelling, you know, it's not the, the kind of thing where, you know, they just kind of like, oh, well, you destroyed a city, you shouldn't have done that, you know, like, and now everyone's fine with it, you know, there is that kind of whole debate where Superman's not sure. You see it in the capital bombing scene, you know. The, the wheelchair explodes and Superman, you know, he's worried that he didn't see it because he wasn't looking, you know, and, and he says, well, Superman was never real. It's just a, you know, a, a dream of a farmer from Kansas. You know, lo you know, Martha says at one point, you don't own this world of thing. You know, you can be the icon or you can be none of it. You know, you never owe anyone anything. Um, 
and, and you know, Jonathan, you know, his kind of like vision of Jonathan, Jonathan says, you know, there's always a cost to being, you know, a hero. And you just gotta kind of keep rolling with the punches. You know, one day the nightmares will stop and they will see you for who you are. And I think that is what, you know, the Snyder Cut will be kind of about. You know, Superman will come back and, you know, finally he will kind of get to value, you know, he will get to kind of relish and value his life. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were going to say more. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I really like going on tangents when I talk about these films. Yeah, yeah, you're um, talking a lot about it, and it's just, it's great. Um, uh, so, uh, should we just talk about the Martha scene? Ah, <sighs> let's talk about the Martha scene. So, I'll, I'll explain it, because y you love to explain, so, yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, so, a lot of people, a lot of people hate the Martha scene. Um, they really do. So, I had this discussion with my friends from high school, uh, 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 you might be listening to this now, so, uh, <laughs> and so, um, he doesn't like this, but, um, so, a lot of people don't like the Martha scene because, um, because the outcome, apparently, he said the outcome was terrible, or it didn't really, uh, like, finish too well, at that, they thought the, the execution was, uh, terrible, so, um, so, the Martha scene. Um, Batman was about to kill Superman, and this is where the film gets very intense about, like, Batman trying to kill Superman with the Kryptonian staff, uh, so, um, Bat Superman says, we need to save Martha, and then Batman's, like, very, very angry, you know, he was about to kill uh, Superman, like, why would you say that name? Why would you say it? And then yeah, Batman thinks you know, ba Batman thinks it's a trick. He's like, what are you trying to do? You know, like you're an eight, you're nothing. You're not even a man. You're not a god. You're not a man. Look at look at me. I'm about to kill you. You know, yeah. you think you can just stop me just because you say my mum's name? What the what are you playing at? Yeah, and like when Lois, uh, like he was about to get really angry, and then Lois uh, just came and said, no, 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 that's that that that's his that's his mum's that, that's his mother's name, and then. Batman has this sudden realization. This is where he gets like, uh, like hit by a train. No, no, this is not where he gets hit by a train. This is metaphorical, but uh, like, <laughs> no, that would be hilarious if Batman's like, why did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I then, like train so kids from from Aston movie just stops by. Really, really um, heartbreaking for him because he doesn't want to be the the criminal that um, um, that killed his parents, uh, Joe Chill. He, that the one that killed him in the alleyway, so he doesn't want to feel that pain that you've been through as a child, uh, or the or to be the one who killed his parents, and it's just really heartbreaking for him. And have this sudden real realization, and this is where this is he comes back to the no killing rule. That this is a great, great, great uh, character motivation for him to um, have this understa uh, understanding of what it means to be a hero. And, um, well, for the for the whole film, he sees Superman as an alien. He sees him from far away, and I think the idea that he sees him, you know, from this perspective of you know of, of humanity, you know, he's trying to prove that he's not a god or a man. But then he says, "Oh no, he's just like me," you know, like you know, like I'm going to become the very thing that created me, and I can't do that, you know. And it doesn't stop him from killing, but it stops him from killing, you know. Like, he would have gone so far as to kill the innocent, you know? And and that's not fair. You know, obviously, like, in the next scene, he does do a lot of damage, but, like, the you know, the idea of it that he, you know, he realises, you know, that he's lost. You know, if you think about the Civil War comic, right, at the end of the comic, you know, the, the people, I like, Captain America's beating on Iron Man, and the people jump on Cap, and like, what are you doing? Get off him. And then Cap realises, we're not even fighting for anything anymore, you know? And I think it's similar in this film. Batman realises, you know, I, you know, I started this crusade for a reason, and it's not even about that anymore, you know? Like, this is, like, I'm, I, I'm, I've forgotten who I am. Um, and I think that's really important. I get that people, you know, I get that people who even understand it still don't like it. And yeah, I think I do get that. I think, you know, it can be miscon it can be construed as kind of like cheesy and like not the best. But I think, hey, if you don't like it, that's fine. But at yeah. least the music's yeah. great. 
you know, it's a. I think it's an excellent payoff. Oh, the music, the music throughout. Well, I think um, the music in the whole film absolutely oh, wonderful. Oh yeah, like um. Oh, we will talk about Wonder Woman because that we will. when that love it. Yeah. Ah, uh, like when you saw it, like so with the music, and when Wonder Woman came in, she came out of nowhere. That was so unexpected for so me. Cool. I was like, holy crap! That just came out. Of I nowhere. Think, well, everyone, then, let's talk about Wonder Woman then, shall we? Yeah, Wonder Woman. Uh, so this is a great way. Oh, well, obviously, well, with with Batman and Wonder Woman I- introducing them into the DCEU, and uh, with Superman being the the one who started it. Uh, so I think it's a really uh, good setup for Justice League. The fact that Batman doesn't have to f- like find Wonder Woman and be like, "Hey, I need your help." Instead, she's already like. Yeah, I know what's going on. You know, I've seen Superman die. I've seen that something's about to happen. You know, and, and her and Batman already know each other and they can work together in Justice League. I think that's very clever. Um, I think yeah. excellent casting. Excellent casting. Yeah, like Gal-, Gal Gadot be- is so good in the role. Yeah, she is. And uh, the way... Uh, well, uh, the great way of this film is that it slowly builds up of, like, seeing Gal Gadot being... Well, sorry, uh, um, what? Diana. I, no, please, I haven't forgot her, her, her name. Diana. Please, uh, yeah, Diana. Diana. It's Diana so, Prince. Di- we slowly build up, uh, like, uh, Diana Beer, try, um, trying to be, uh, getting to that point where she's Wonder Woman. And uh, and you can see out throughout the film that she she goes to, uh, she follows Bruce, or she just goes to this, um, uh, to this plate, the museum. Yeah, there was a, a very, um, Good, uh, really cool reference uh, when uh, when um, Diana was in this museum, and then the guy said, "This sword belongs to Alexander the Great." Yeah, this was a reference to Watchmen. So yes, um, that yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I yeah. really like about Wonder Woman how you know the whole film she's you know she's hiding who she is. She's trying to get her photo to to make sure that nobody knows who she is. Then she's been operating as a hero. Yeah, and then I, as soon yeah. as as soon as Batman gives her you know like oh, I know who you are now, and there are loads more like you, like, what is going on? And, and, and she runs from that, you know, she gets on the plane and she's like, I can't do this. And then she sees that, you know, Doomsday could very well just destroy everything, you know, like, he's destroying, like, downtown Metropolis, you know, Superman's been, like, like you know, taken into the air, and she has to make that decision, like, to come yeah. back. And I think that's a really cool little payoff. Yeah. I think it, it becomes so much more evident once you've watched Wonder Woman, which you could see as a little bit of a, you know, like, that's not great that you have to watch this other film, but, you know, it is. it was meant to be, like, you know, like, all tying into each other, so I, I, I'll give it a, a pass on that. Um, so many people, yeah. like, critique the, um, the email uh, that Batman sends her, um, obviously setting up Justice League, and... Um, I, I mean, it's like a two-minute scene. I don't care, you know. It's not... It, 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 again, it's not supposed to be... Uh, well, I, everyone was questioning about it, like, uh, about, uh, everything about it. It's a comic book film, and it's great. Yeah, but, like, you know... Going it, back to the Grant Morrison quote uh, about, like, everything. I mean, I don't mind. It's just a film... And film sometimes don't make sense. Yeah, it's, it's uh, like it's like the, the film is setting up Justice League. You know, it's part of this huge story. I think that's very cool. You know, it makes sense that, you know, you don't have a shield in this universe. There's no Nick Fury to be like, okay, let's take all these people. You know, Batman has to figure it out from somewhere. And I think Lex Luthor is the person who is, you know, the most like, you know, um, kind of like, uh, he wants to know everything about everything. I think it makes sense that he would have that. And I think as well, you know, it adds to the, um, you know, it adds adds to Batman's arc for the end of the film where he's like, you know, we've got to get the other people to fight. And as well, it adds to Diana's decision to leave and then come back, which ties into her arc. It, it It's not like Age of Ultron where Thor just leaves for like ages and then comes back. You know, he, he leaves for like a good 20 minute chunk and he finds, he gets some set up for the future films and he comes back to activate Vision. You know, I think it ties into the characters much more in this film. And I think, you know, like no one, like you, no one's going to complain in other trilogies when the second film will set up the third one. So I think you know, there's no real reason to complain about this one. And I think similarly, shall we talk about the nightmare scene? The nightmare scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So just, I'm just uh, out, of, out of curiosity. Have you seen the 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 i the IMAX clip? 
Yes. From the um, they've remastered Batman v Superman in the four by three aspect ratio, same yeah. as Snyder Cut. Yeah. So and they wait, released wait, different ratio aspects. Pardon. Wait, did you say different ratio expect, as, aspect? D- yeah, different aspect ratio. It's, it's now oh, four by three. Right. Um, oh, like, I like, to, like to do the side court. Yeah, so they've made it, so they've remastered it the same, and, and they released, like, the opening of the um, of the uh, of the nightmare scene uh, in that aspect ratio. I just want to say, it wait, looks wait, beautiful. Wait, where's it coming out? I need to buy it. <laughs> uh, it's out in late April. Oh. Um, so, unfortunately, we won't be able to watch it. Um <laughs> Before the Snyder Cut comes out. But yeah. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well. Um, but anyway, yeah, the Nightmare scene, this is where it's just, it's a great, great, great way of leading up to the uh, the Justice League, especially the one that we're all so excited about for the Nightmare sequence uh, in the Snyder Cut. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Very cool. You know, it's a great little bit of action. Um, you've got the, you know, the parademons and the evil Superman. I really like how, you know, I really like Batman's look. Obviously, he's carrying a gun. Yes, that's a thing. I yeah. think, you know, I think this just goes to show after Darkseid takes over Earth, you know, Bruce loses his faith even more, and that's why he gets up the guns. That's kind of how I see it. And I love how, on the one hand, it is a setup to... Um, Justice League with, with the Flash being like, Bruce, you're right, don't, like, you got to kill him, man. Um... Uh, but I think at the same time, I really, really like how it shows Bruce's, like, increasing, um, what's the word? Uh, Morality? No, his increasing, um, paranoia about Superman, you know, he's, like, throughout throughout the film, you know, he thinks that Superman could like destroy you know he's the power to wipe out the entire human race if there's even a one percent chance we lose his enemy and then he's and then he gets the dream which you know builds that in him even more where now he sees this could literally happen and obviously he doesn't know the whole context plan he doesn't know that it's dark side and you know the apocalypse and the parademons all he knows is that you know superman is you know evil and that's what that could be like and i think that's a really nice way you know you can see it as a setup for justice league but it has a purpose of the characters as well you know i think that too many people just forget about that and are like it's just pointless setup no no it's not because it you know it, it reinforces batman's whole character and his motivation throughout yeah and um and especially um so last year i read a a great graphic novel called last night on earth yeah it's so similar to um the one but it's different because uh there's a different uh, way uh, the, the the graphic no- uh, goes somewhere, uh, 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 and um, and I, I love it because it just gives you those those vibes that uh, I was reading in it. It's just like this is really exciting because you get to see like a Batman slash like Mad Max style that on this um apocalyptic world that he's in that is completely driven by dark side and uh, you see that those really it's very experimental you see like it's just so interesting to see those things mesh together uh, and um and yeah it's just seeing batman like he's just completely lost his faith and uh, he's trying to save um his way and uh, this i think this sets up to maybe superman going evil in I don't know. Maybe he could be uh, in uh, in the Snyder Cut, like when he's torturing those um, prisoners. Yeah, uh, very cool. You know, the idea that he's that he is the kind of right hand man of uh, of um, Dark, Dark Side, and he has these troopers. You know, the Superman logo on him who work for him. I think that's very very interesting. Um, do you want to uh, let's talk about let's talk about two more things before we wrap up? Let's talk about Lex Luthor, and then we'll talk about you know the whole ending of the film. Um, yeah. So obviously Lex Luthor isn't um, he isn't the comic book Lex Luthor, you know. Uh, yeah. Je- Jesse Eisenberg doesn't play him as you know other iterations of Lex Luthor has done. And I think that's good. You know, I don't want him to be exactly, you know, if I wanted like a complete, you know, if you want a complete classic Lex Luthor, watch the original Superman, watch Superman Returns, or actually don't because that's Kevin Spacey. Um, but, you know, watch Supergirl, watch the animated series. There's loads of things, you know, that with like the class Lex Luthor. And I really like how this Lex Luthor is just mad. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, and I like it because well, a lot of people said that Zack Snyder doesn't understand characters. Well, he, he he does actually because he explored this in the in the film and uh, about like the lifestyle, like, like Bruce Wayne, uh, like is different. Uh, ideologies towards Superman and then like Lex Luthor. So Lex Luthor sets up like a really good uh, character, well, this uh, character arc that he um, he wanted Superman, well, a god uh, somewhere to, uh, for be him because um, he was uh, abused as a child and yeah. uh, he wanted Superman or like a god to help him where he was in need in that time. So that's it like, uh, a different way of, like, putting it into religion as well, like... Yeah, it's really interesting how Superman is, you know, is the embodiment of God. The God that never saved Lex Luthor from, you know, abuse as a child. He says that line to the senator, you know, the oldest lie in America is that power can be innocent. And you see that he, he sees, you know, Superman as this embodiment of the very thing that could have saved him, but didn't... And, you know, he has these deep-seated issues because of it. You know, he believes that, you know, devils, you know, come from the sky and that Superman is just the embodiment of it. And and he's obsessed with, with God bowing to his will. And he says it at the end when, when Superman kneels in front of him and he's like, now God bows before my will. And, you know, and I think it's very interesting how, you know, his, like, he wants, to, he, he, he sets up so many things to try and get Superman to... You know, he tries to change public perception on him. He tries to get Batman to kill him. You know, he tries to get Doomsday to kill him. And he does this thing to gain knowledge and power for himself. And he gains so much knowledge that by the end, when he when Steppenwolf is revealed to him, I love that scene, by the way, seeing Steppenwolf and the music swells and it's this amazing setup for Justice League. You see, you know, Lex completely change from that moment, you know? He goes into prison. And when Batman, you know... When Batman visits us, he's like, "Dude, I'm I'm insane." And you've and and now that Superman's dead, largely because of you, you know, he's coming for us. And I think it's absolutely wonderful that final scene. Not only where Batman decides not to brand him, which is again, you know, Batman's arc showing that you know he he's not just, you know, he he has the Superman has changed him now. Uh, the fact that, you know, when Batman leaves, Lex is yelling, you know, the bell's rung, it can't be unrung, he's found us, he's coming, you know, there's nothing you can do, and I think that's really great, how Lex is, you know, Lex is like lust for power, like, you know, your anger and your lust for power have already done that, um, it's like Vader, uh, but yeah, I, I really like it. Yeah, and, um, yeah, a lot of people didn't like the character, but I liked it, and, yeah, uh, yeah and, um, Mm, yeah, so um, yeah, I think this, this film sets up like really well for like Superman. He said that he doesn't want. Um... Wait, what was the the line that uh, saying that um, Lex Luthor saying that you um, you let your villains die? I don't know. You In let you, film, you let your know, family like, die. Uh, no, like you can't let the villain. What well, you, you kill people, but then but, uh, Superman saves uh, Lex Luthor's life from Doomsday when he was going to get. Um, I don't know. There was a line somewhere that. Um, oh, it, I, is it? Is it? If God is all powerful, he cannot be all good, and if he's all good, he cannot be all powerful. Yes, that's the line. Absolutely, that's... like one of the best lines in the film, I think. You know, like and. Uh, he has a really good point, you know, he's like, if the god was all-powerful, you know, he would have been able to save me, and if he was all good, he would have been saved me, so there's no way that he could be either of those things, you know, and he wants to prove that, and I think he does it really, really well. I, I love, obviously, the, the, the warehouse scene, incredible bit of action, but I love how he's, like, you know, like, ready to be like, ah, yeah, Martha dead, and he's like, nope, and, 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 and then he's like, well, if god, if man won't kill god, the devil will do it, um, and I really, really enjoy that, um, I mean, right, let's talk about Doomsday and the ending, shall we? Yes, the Doomsday. So, well, funny enough, uh, back in 2016 or 2017, uh, the only criticism I had for the film was Doomsday. And Doomsday, I was like, ah, right, so Doomsday looks a bit w weird for me. But now, uh, I, I, really like the, uh, the, like, I really like Doomsday because, um, it, again, I didn't really look too much into the film... Uh, but then, like, like so yeah, many people, yeah. So what I didn't know, well, uh, no, well, after I saw Man Steel, is that 
Um, on Doomsday, there's the same scar that Zod has. Um, yeah, so very cool. Zod is like the um, the, well, the, the same character for um, for Doomsday, but like a more brutal way and um, about this this abomination of like um, this Kryptonian um, thing. Wait, was that? Um, I think I don't know. Um, Zack Snyder said that that Doomsday creature was like used in Krypton. Maybe I don't know. He well, Zack did confirm in Man of Steel. There's an, there's an, there's a a moon that is like exploded in on Krypton. It's got a hole through it, and he said, you know, that is you know that that is the original Doomsday. So the original Doomsday could be out there sometimes. Um, oh. but but I I agree with you. I, well, I agreed with you back then. I thought that, and I think that you know, I think Doomsday is cool. I like how um you know like it's as I said, Lex's power yeah, kind of going cool. too much for him. I like how um. I like how he is, you know, Superman's decision to kill Zod kind of like coming back to bite him. I really like how, you know, they do the death of Superman plotline. Um, I think the final action scene isn't quite as emotionally charged as it is in Man of Steel. So that is a little bit of a criticism I have. However, since reading, so you'll, I'll, I'll talk about this more in the weekly Viewing segment, but I read the Death of Superman, right? And I just want to say, right, Death of Superman starts with Doomsday escaping, right? And from every th escaping from this like hole in the ground, he was he was engineered by this company called Cadmus, um, and everyone of like everyone who criticizes Doomsday in Batman v Superman makes me think that Doomsday like it has a much bigger role. Doomsday literally doesn't say like one sentence. He says like two words in the whole Death of Superman comic. You know, he is literally he doesn't have any force behind him. He's literally just uh, an alien who roars and kills Superman. Like, and I think that the mindless, like, monster from Death of Superman is done really well. You know, they add the kind of energy, the, the connection to the Kryptonian, Kryptonian origins. They show that, like, he, he just withtakes anything that is brought into him. And I think he's done really well. Um, the whole entire fight with at the end of Wonder Woman and, and the, the death of Superman and, and showing the, the end of his arc is really, really nice. Um... And yeah, I don't. I, I think they. I don't think it was too soon to do Death of Superman. Yeah. Um, I think the idea yeah. that they, you know, show the world in mourning at the end, and then that carries over to Justice League is very smart. You know, it's like Infinity War. You, no one ever thought that the characters would be gone forever, but it's about what happens in between. It's about what happens to the characters. You know, you see Batman change, you see Wonder Woman change, you see world lose hope and the world gain hope. I, I think it's it's very interesting. You know, the end. One of my favorite lines is when Wonder Woman says, "The others like me. Why do you think you have to fight?" And Batman just says, "Just a feeling." And it's like, oh my god, Justice League is gonna be so cool. Yeah, and um, uh, I I was like um, very excited from like from the ending to, uh, in Batman v Superman about how um, uh, like this, you can see like the start of the uh, the character arc for Bruce like thinking about men are good, men still can be good. Yes, and, uh, of course, men are still good. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And uh, and that just sets completely up for um, for the uh, the for the Snyder Cut. Um, so um, which was supposed to be coming out, seen in this true vision. But now I think we're going to see like the true sweet character developments in that. Ooh, very which, excited. Like that, um, Chris and Snyder uh, worked on to Definitely. make the story um, like continue and make it um, so exciting and fresh with like. All those putting those together, like um, having Dark Side, the um, the Nightmare sequence, and seeing uh, the Justice League all working together, and see those like how they could work together properly for the first time, and uh, and seeing how Cyborg and like all the the people can fit in together, like Flash, um, Cyborg, and Aquaman all t t together, and seeing how they could be like a like a team that they belong. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean. I think all in all, you know, if you don't like Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, you know, that's up to you. We're not here to change your mind. You know, we love we love it. You know, we'd love you guys to, you know, share your opinions in the comments or send us an email. We will definitely respond. But, you know, I, I think before you watch Zack Snyder Justice League, you know, before you come in with it with any expectations, rewatch Man of Steel. 
Rewatch yeah. Batman v Superman. If you haven't seen the Ultimate Edition, watch it. It has so much more of Lois Lane. She has a great role in her investigation. Yeah. You see, get to see Superman go to Metropolis and you know learn about what the what the Bat does to the people of Metropolis, and you know that more context for why he didn't like him. It's so much better, and I think you know you owe that to Zack Snyder. You know all the people who who were. I mean. Sorry, but all the people who are really horrible to Zack Snyder, you know, like, you, you kind of owe it to him to, you know, give it another chance, you know, yeah. with fresh eyes, uh, you know, opinions can change for better or for worse, you know, recently I watched all the Star Wars films, and one of my least favourite, Return of the Jedi, became one of my favourites, you know, like, you just gotta, you know, like, remember, you know, like, just, like, watch it as if it's your first time, and, like, think about what we've said, think about what other people say, and you know, give it another chance, because I think it deserves it, you know, I really think there's a lot to love before you watch the Snyder Cut. Um, yeah, and um, and a lot of people just um, hate on Zack Snyder for no reason, and that is uh, that is not fair, and he, no. he's, he's been to a lot of um, stuff. Definitely, I think and, through, he, through uh, our yeah. Zack Snyder extravaganza, we've watched five Zack Snyder films, and I feel like I understand him more than ever, you know? All of his films are so yeah. like meticulously done. Yeah. You know, they're, this, they're, they have so much to say, and he doesn't deserve any of the hate he gives, and especially, especially yeah. not after what happened with his daughter Autumn. Yeah. And I think yeah. that the Snyder Cut is only is only a good thing. Yeah, and um, and uh, this is a, a very um, it's it's such a good thing, like bringing back like Zach to have his true vision on what. He wants to, everyone to, to see, and uh, and it, this is like one of uh, like a life chance, uh, a lifetime uh, thi- uh, thing to see because this is a director who wants to see uh, share his vision, and a company does not want. Um, so uh, yeah, and uh, and his films, like over the weeks, I have just been uh, just enjoying these films that I haven't seen before. And and he's just one of the best directors. Um, Definitely, he's he's kind of he's made his way into some of my favorite directors after watching all of these films. Yeah, especially in the top five. I'll, I'll put oh, definitely. Top. Yeah, I, I yeah. think I'd agree with you there. Um, yeah. yeah. All in all, uh, what would you give Batman v Superman out of ten? Okay, I'm gonna give it a ten. Nice, nice. Because like, especially like, I think it's just such. A, a brilliant uh, comic book movie and it's just so um, emotional and it's just impactful about thinking about these characters on a realistic way and it's just done it so perfectly well from The Dark Knight Returns and other comics as well and it just sets up completely well uh, just for the um, for just I was about to say Justice League John <laughs> no, 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 John you stupid man. Okay. God damn it John we've got seven billion dislikes Oh no, guys! Please don't cancel me. Um, <laughs> so uh, sets perfectly well for Zack Snyder's film. There it is. There it is. So um, yeah, so I just love watching this film. It's just um, a film that this is the first time I've seen a Zack Snyder film. Well, take that back. Well, a comic book film. This is like the first time I actually seen like a comic book film that really put me on uh, really emotional. Um, a journey with these characters Definitely. and fun fact back in 2016 I actually teared up when uh, Superman died and like sacrificing himself nice. I yeah, I didn't actually cry but I just teared up I was like wow this is oh yeah well I think re-watching these like films last year I cried at Man of Steel and I teared up at, at Batman v Superman and you know anyone who knows me will tell you that I don't cry at a lot of films Fast and yeah. Furious 7 um <laughs> Uh, the films yeah. a lot. But no, um, I think I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. There are a couple of issues for me, but I think I agree with you. It is a very personal experience, you know. There are loads of things that I love that people won't yeah. get. But like, you know, the end of the day, we're getting the Snyder Cut. We're getting the end of the trilogy. Whether or not we get Justice League 2 and 3, whether or not we ever see any of these characters ever again on the screen, we're getting yeah. that trilogy... It's what I've wanted for so long, and it means so much to me. Um, yeah. it, it means the world to so many people, you know. And yeah, to, to, it's, to, it's to gonna be many. great. It's gonna be great. Yeah. No matter what, we're getting it, you know. And, I, and yeah. the first experience watching it will be something special. It's like how I say, you know, I do not like, 
The Rise of Skywalker anymore. But that first time I watched it, that midnight screening, when I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen ever, is an incredible experience that will never be take, taken away from me. You know, yeah. no matter what you think of a film, you know, in your life, you know, like, you will always treasure what it what it is, what it means to you. And I think Zack Snyder's Justice League, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman is a trilogy that means everything to me. Yeah. And, um, and this is just the film that we just been waiting to see and uh and it believable how we just got here and uh and seeing this uh, vision that everyone's just saying it's not real it doesn't exist uh and it's just so satisfying satisfying to see or hear about people like saying oh the, the side of exists and uh and we as like side um side fans or <laughs> Snyder fans, you know, like comic book fans, just so excited to see this film, Definitely. and and it, it, it's just so, um, does it, it's just you know, just great to see this Definitely. happening. Like everyone just worked together and support Zack Snyder, and and they've done so much uh, um, for Zack Snyder as well, like raising uh, money for charity. Uh, Definitely, uh, however many toxic fans there might have been. You know, they yeah. did. Like, a lot of people did raise so much money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which cannot be overlooked. Um, absolutely yeah. incredible. But um, yeah, John, we've been talking for fifty minutes on Batman wow. v Superman. What a film, uh, indeed. Let's move on to our weekly viewing segment, shall we? Um, uh, I, I I just had a blast talking about it. Me um, too. Me too. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll I'm gonna start right, and I'm gonna just quickly talk about um, a film that I've watched this week, um, which is Field of Dreams. Um, so now this is a film that you've recommended to me for ages, um, I finally yeah. got around to it, it was on Amazon Prime, so I thought, right, I'll watch it, um, and I really enjoyed it, and um, I really enjoy how the film is just a journey of, you know, self-discovery and catharsis, you know, Kevin Costner's character goes through a journey where he has to, you know, where he, you know, he finds peace with so many things in his life, with his father, with, you know, his love for baseball, and so many other characters in the films do too. And I really, really enjoyed it. I had a, I had a huge, huge, like, you know, emotional reaction to it. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was a great film that I definitely recommend. I will say, there's this one plot line with the bank, where the, the bank is threatening to take away their house, and... It, it, it feels very inconsequential to the entire thing, and I don't didn't think it really added much tension or anything. I just thought it was kind of in there, and then it kind of, you know... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It kind uh, of ended. Um, but I think, you know, that might have been a little problem, but the emotions felt through the film are, you know, so much greater than that. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Obviously, you've seen it already, but anyone who hasn't seen it, definitely watch it. It's on Amazon Prime in the UK, and I think I give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Uh, yeah, same with you. Uh well, I had this this massive um, emotional um, thing. I was just uh, crying so hard at the end um, <laughs> because it's just like um, I really like baseball, and uh, my dad was like, "You should watch this film." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I watch it." And it's just it, it was just the score, the characters, and the dialogue that was just just uh, moved me, and uh, it was just it, it was just weird because I really don't normally quiet films like that but um because this this was a pg film i was like oh this is gonna be um a very light hard film and i was i was like oh this is great until the ending i was like oh man yeah i think oh. people can um people sometimes people think that like you know films that aren't like you know strictly ad adult films can't be emotional but you know if you look at toy story or like loads of pixar films loads of like P pgs and U's can be you know really um really emotional yeah especially like um i had this emotional uh uh moment where like you know like Schind schindler's list yeah um, yeah what a film <sighs> yeah so uh so what have you watched this week um what have i watched this week uh deadpool 2 i ah. watched deadpool 2, uh this week and i haven't seen this film for quite a while now and uh, I was like, oh, it's on Disney Plus, so uh, I'll watch it. And I had a blast watching it. it. It was, I forgot how funny it was. I mean, there was like some stuff that I've uh, completely um, over my head, like some references. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so um, 
there was great, great stuff in the film that I really, uh, funny, uh, really liked. Like the comedy um, and the, the, the full-full jokes, uh, the full-full week um, comedy. And um, and this is overall so much better, infinitely better than Deadpool, the first one. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I feel like Deadpool 2 has a better... Uh, better flow, uh, like with the um, with the time and everything, and it's just like um, keep back with like the uh, visual comedy and also soul soul comedy throughout the film. And yeah, it's just a lot great of to see Josh Brolin as Cable. Oh yeah, yeah. A, yeah, a lot of people great. say you know, Dead. A lot of, most people prefer Deadpool to Deadpool Two, but I've always obviously I haven't watched either of them in a while, but I've always preferred Deadpool Two, and I liken it to Indiana Jones. Whereas like Temple of Doom, I think, has such a, a, a greater emotional core with Indiana Jones' relationship with Short Round especially. Um, and I think you get that in um, in Deadpool too. Like, I think uh, Deadpool's whole, you know, arc with, um, you know, with his the emotions of what happens with Vanessa um, and then, like, the whole arc of the boy and Cable's emotional arc, I think... The emotions of the film really elevate it above the first one for me. Yeah, and um, I, I I give this film an eight out of ten or seven. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, an eight, an eight. I'll give it because um, it's just enjoyable to watch. I mean, I had some criticism because, uh, especially the ending, uh, uh, um, where Deadpool was um, about to die, but then they brought him back because that was emotional. Yeah, they really dragged that out as well. Uh, but no, it uh, yeah, it's a um, great film if you're feeling down or it's just a great comedy to watch. Uh, yeah, I just give this film a 10 and there's great, great character moments, especially uh, they brought back uh, Juggernaut on screen because a uh, massive, massive Juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, they, I wish they could have made that joke from the X-Men's Last Stand, like the British... Um, Me too. I always thought that was such an easy joke. Like, I was always so astounded that they never did that. Yeah. That could be really fun, but yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I recommend it. Eight out of ten. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so another thing that I, I, I obviously I talked about earlier uh, that I that I actually read um, was Death of Superman. Right. So I spoke about the first. So the Death of Superman consists of four graphic novels: Death of Superman, Funeral for a Friend, Reign of Super, of the Superman, and The Return of Superman. I read them all over the last um, couple of weeks, you know, uh, and I'm now reading Dark Knight Returns, you know, like to just kind of like get ready for that time, just to like, see the influences. And I want to say by the, f- I read the first issue, I read Death of Superman and I was very, very underwhelmed. It was a load of action. It was basically seven issues where everyone's like, oh my God, we can't kill Doomsday. What are we going to do? They fight, they fight, they fight. And then Superman dies. Obviously I get that it's a huge cultural milestone and it's like a huge thing where, um, you know, the world doesn't expect Superman to die, and then he does. Very cool stuff, but I was very disappointed by it. But what came after was very, very cool. I enjoyed seeing the world in mourning, the world, you know, like, figuring out, trying to figure out what to do with Superman. You know, religious cultists come about who are thinking, you know, Superman is the, is like Christ. He's going to rise again. You know, there's so many, like, Christ metaphors for Superman. Like, some people think that Zack Snyder, like, invented it. He really didn't. Like, it's been there, like, for so long. But I digress. Um, the idea that different Supermen come up and claim to be Superman or, like, you know, try and take over, like, like his spot in the world is very, very good. And the way that it all comes together with Superman's return in the very nice black suit. No cape. I prefer it with a cape in Zack Snyder's Justice League. But, you know, uh, you know, that's my own personal taste. I, but I really enjoy how everything, you know, comes together um, you know, all the characters, like, allegiances are revealed. The plot lines wrap up very nicely, I think. Um, and, yeah, I just think it's very, very, um, like, it starts off and it's fine. And I think it's really good to try and see people get over it and the kind of catharsis that everyone has to, you know, get over the death of this icon. And I think that's very, very nice. Um, and, yeah, I think I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I think it it, it, it didn't hook me straight away. But as it kind of went on, um, it doesn't make me want to read more Superman comics. But it definitely makes me think, well, I get why it's such a big thing and why so many people love it so much. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you... Uh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say, do you recommend it? Yeah, I think I, think I would. Um, yeah, uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it's like, it's not as good as like most of the Batman comics I've read. Ah, 
Because okay, like, yeah. I, in general, I just prefer Batman, but I think it, it is worth the read, definitely. I think I just saw a massive bird. A massive bird? Yeah. Where? I just I just saw, like, like maybe um, a kestrel or albatross. A, a kestrel. Those aren't birds. Those are giant vampire bats. Um, so, I've been reading... Um, well, I haven't read these for a while, but Deathstroke comics. Um, ah, so, nice. Yeah, so the one what uh, written this? by Tony S. Daniel, and they are the new Bitter Tea ones. Nice. Uh, I couldn't tell which one were the new, div- but but uh, but these two comics, um, I got uh, I got volume one and volume two. I'm I'm trying to get volume three and volume four. Uh, so that's the, the thing I'm trying to do. Uh, and these comics are great. They're really fun to read. Um, and uh, what and it's fresh because. Normally, I don't really read like um, villains uh, comics or something, but this this is a great way of like seeing um, a villain. That this Deathstroke is my vi- favorite villain because um, like the skill that he has, and like uh, especially that he has different powers, and um, uh, and it's funny because um, the, uh, Deadpool is the ripoff version of Deathstroke. Uh, so yeah, they um, have so many similarities. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, so many sim- similarities, and um, and th- it's a great comic. Um, New Vista Two, uh, but there's the Rebirth one that is written by Christopher Priest. He does great ones as well. Especially he did he did um, Batman vs. Deathstroke, which is great as well. I would recommend. Yeah, yeah, I've read that one. Yeah, and. Um, and I got these comics in Boston, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it a go. And I was, I read, like, the first graphic novel, and I was like, whoa, this is so good. And then... Were they were the, they in another after, language? Sorry? Were they in another language? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I read the, um, I read the first volume in Boston, and I was like, whoa, this is so good. So the day after, I got the uh, second volume, I was nice. like... This so good so um yeah so the first one's called gods of war and the next one is called god killer and um and and there's like a lot of similarities of like um deathstroke like deathstroke's father is apollo and um and we know uh there's like um apollo in endgame so yeah they're not they're not connected but i thought oh that's pretty cool like apollo we're we're referencing the batman comic endgame not the avengers film not the avengers film so so it's the comic yeah i'm I'm a i'm a huge fan of the new 52 i've read five new 52 runs and i really really like them all so yeah and i love deathstroke as well so and that's one to would you recommend it yeah i would recommend it it's a it's a great read and if you're like looking to read some like um action and for something that you want to explore more about uh slade wilson and uh and oh no it's not it's not apollo i'm sorry it's odysseus ah rookie mistake don't worry about it <laughs> it, it kind of sounded like similar i don't know why my brain just said oh do it um so uh yeah so if you do i give it a nine out of ten because they're just great to read um and I mean, it's just uh, because I haven't really explored much about Deathstroke. And you, if you want to more explore more about Deathstroke, uh, I this is the comic you need to read. Can't go uh, wrong with a bit of New Fifty Two. Yes, New Fifty Two, uh, and yeah. So yeah, especially your villain, uh, your favorite villain's Bane. So uh, there's a comic called City of Bane, which is written by Tom King. That is, yeah. I want to read that run real bad. The the Rebirth Batman run. Yeah, very very cool. I love a bit. I love a little little, little bit of Bane. Yeah, uh, I love Deathstroke. So I'm hoping. Well, I'm hoping there's going to be like more Deathstroke comic books uh, or something that makes you know like impactful, like the new like the Batman one in the new Fifty Two. Something that is impactful towards. Something. Well, like, I mean, th- uh, if you're looking for Deathstroke content, I tell you what, Deathstroke is one of the best parts of Arrow, the TV show. He's so cool in it. Um, uh yeah he's prevalent in season one and two so which are probably some of the best seasons of the show so if like if you're looking for deathstroke content anyone out there arrow absolute brilliant stuff right okay um 
Yeah. So again, nine out of ten. So awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's it for me. Are, are you are you good? Yeah, yeah, that is it for me. Right, brilliant. So th- as always, thank you everyone for um, watching. Um, leave a like if you if you enjoyed. Leave a comment. I'm sure so many of you will have opinions on Batman v Superman that you would you know, love to share and talk about. Um, you know, please you know subscribe and share this around if you have anyone who who you know might agree or disagree with us who you know could come a good debate. If you want to, you know, obviously. Um, get in touch with us you can email us at asktimepod at gmail.com um, obviously there's so many things that people you know think about the Snyder Cut and there will be more opinions when it comes out so you know anything you want to say we'll, you know for next week and when we talk about Snyder Cut like you know, asking our opinions on various things like please please email us um, or send us a DM on Twitter or Instagram where we are, where we are at asktimefilmpod or individually on Twitter I am at Tom the Boardman I am Kobe John 42 on Twitter brilliant um so yeah, so that's um, almost the end of our Zack Snyder um, extravaganza, culminating with the event itself. Um, yeah, and I, I know that we're both uh, going dark, as it were, um, on the internet as of Monday. Going dark. Going dark. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, brilliant. Anything else to say? Um, okay, my advice for the Zack Snyder thing, I, 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 well, I, just be safe, everyone, uh, wear a mask and wash your hands, but... As Listen, important for, because this is the week where Zack Snyder Justice League is coming out this week. So if you don't want spoilers or anything like that, please just go dark in uh, in Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, um, Facebook, even. Who yeah. even use Facebook? Even? I don't know. And uh, well, it's, and- like, it's, it's already it's already leaked once. You never know what could come out. You know, I think it's you know, yeah. Yeah, you just yeah, just if you're just googling something, just just be careful because yes. there could be a stack side that just popped out, pop out of nowhere, just like like the like the the Batman, uh, the man bat in uh, Arkham Knight. Oh my so, god, that literally scared my socks off. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So be safe from the stack side of weather, and please be safe as well, wearing a mask and washing hands and. Um, and hopefully things will get better. Well, yeah, we we're uh, we're back in college properly on Monday. So yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and Zack Snyder's film uh, is coming out on Sky. Yes, uh, Sky Cinema uh, or Now TV for us in the UK. So yeah. that's. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with the free trial. You might be able to do the free trial, or you can pay twelve pounds. Uh, to get it for a month, which I think is wonderful, uh, considering yeah, that you had to pay for Wonder Woman on, on Amazon for uh, oh, for fifteen pounds to watch it twice in two days. Yeah, like you can watch and, it as many times in a month. Uh, yeah, and the uh, the Wonder Woman uh, nineteen eighty four, which is coming out March the twenty second. So, uh, yeah, Wait, I'm on, get, uh, on on Now TV or on Sky Cinema. Uh, no, you can. You can buy it on uh, Amazon. Oh my god. Are you finally going to watch Wonder Woman? <laughs> yes. Oh my god, everybody. It's happening. I it's happening. I it twice. Brilliant. Yeah, so... Um, we've had a... We, we've actually had a, a Wonder Woman 84 thumbnail done for about, like, four months now. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, can it be updated? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's still... It, it's, it, it will still work um, wonderfully. Um, obviously... Those of you who stuck around will know we were planning to do Wonder Woman 84 for so many weeks, but obviously £15 on Amazon, not worth it. But I've yeah, seen it, it, but yeah. Okay, but, yeah. Uh, thank you for listening in, uh, and we are so excited for the Snyder Court. And- yeah, so we will uh, We'll see you next week where we're going to talk about the mother-effing Snyder Cut, man. It's yeah, so actually happening. Uh, be ready for like I don't know a three hour or a two hour uh, podcast. Episode. It's gonna be a long one. You know, we talked yeah. half an hour of Man of Steel last week, fifty minutes on Batman vs Superman this week. Who knows how much we'll talk about the Snyder Cut? Probably a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm extremely excited. And without further ado, take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.